Well, this is the oyster bags sealed at that end. That's the junk at this end to keep it closed. And the oysters are inside. The mesh allows the oysters to breathe. It protects the oysters. It keeps them in one place. It allows the water to exchange to allow them to feed. We've got really, really good quality water. There's not a heck of a lot of people about the place, so we don't get contamination in the water. We've got big shallow beaches that allow the water to warm up a bit, and that helps the growth of the plankton and then the feeding of the oysters. Gerard grows 350,000 oysters every year, but none of them were born in Barra. The, the kind of oysters we grow are, are Pacific oysters, they're rock oysters, uh, and they don't breed in Scottish waters. The temperature doesn't get high enough for them to breed. So we have to buy oysters from oyster hatcheries uh, about 10 mils, and then we grow them over three to five years to market size. There's no uh, herbicides used, there's no... So we've got a pretty pristine environment. Uh, everything's organic, if you like. The oysters are usually submerged, but as it's low tide, they're free to be harvested. And the exposed beach means something else appears. We have a plane landing within five or six hundred yards of where we grow them. Because this is the only airport in the world where a plane is scheduled to land on a beach. There was a scheduled service, so um, I think it's got to be unique, I would think. Scheduled flights began from Barra's beach runway in 1936. It hit the headlines recently when a passenger surprised his girlfriend with a marriage proposal written into the sand as they flew in together from Glasgow. She said yes, but oddly, sand and oysters are not a perfect match. If these bags end up in the sand, um, the sand infiltrates them through the holes, obviously, and that'll smother the oysters. The frames that we call trestles and a uh, Basically, it's, it's a table without a top, and it elevates the bags off the ground, so it protects the oysters, it keeps them in one place, it allows them to feed. OK. And we'll be regularly taking a ton of oysters off the beach. We sell them wholesale to the major buyers in Scotland. There you go, last bag. What we've got here is 10,000 oysters. Or if you want to go with the absolute count, 10,050 oysters. Uh, in case we've made, we, we don't count them properly, or in case uh, one or two of them get crushed or die, or for whatever reason aren't ready to be eaten or fit to be eaten, we just put in a few extra so that our customers are guaranteed to get the number we sell them. It's always nice to be sitting in the back of a trailer, and especially in a, when you've got that view, which is really stunning. 15 minutes later, a ton of oysters are graded by a piece of kit far more modern than the bags they were grown in. This is our oyster grader. And it, it tells you when you've got the right number or the right weight in a bag. It weighs and sorts 10 times faster than by hand. But Gerard had to shell out to get it. Cost about 25 grand. Pretty sophisticated stuff. Makes life a lot easier. Every minute saved sorting is time spent selling. If you were able to sell each of these oysters for, say, two or three pounds, that's in a top re restaurant. 20 to 30,000 pounds on that pallet. We don't get that. <laughs> Unfortunately. The 10,000 oysters are taken to Barra Atlantic, then via a Calmac ferry to Oban, then on to a wholesaler in Glasgow. <laughs> 